the curves having the property that the segment of a tangent line drawn between the point of tangency and the y-axis is bisected by the x-axis. So we don't get very much information on what the curves are supposed to look like. So let's do our best to draw out some examples that would work and some examples that wouldn't work. And then maybe we can piece together what differential relationship is going on here. Negative parts to. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. So let's pretend that we have a curve that looks something like this. And let's try to recreate the situation that we've described up here. So let's pretend this curve is one of these curves that has this property. The segment of a tangent line drawn between the point of tangency, so I'm just going to pick some point on the curve, I'm going to draw a tangent, and then we're going to see if it has these properties. So pick some point, any point, tangent line, no problem, I can draw that. Right there, oh, that's a pretty good line. And. the point of tangency and the y-axis. So there's the uh, point of tangency and y-axis right there. And we're only concerned with this part of the tangent line. I should call it a tangent segment. So that's the tangent segment we're talking about. And what property should this segment have? Bisected by the x-axis. Bisected by the x-axis. So if I bisect it, that's the middle point. That's definitely not the x-axis. So that's not a good curve. So let's draw a different curve that maybe has this property. Uh, if I'm in the first quadrant, my, let's see, what I would need, I'll draw this in red, what I would like to have, or what I need to have, is this property right here. That's where my tangent should be going, and that should be a midpoint between the two. Obviously, this curve doesn't have, that's not a tangent to the curve I drew. Seems reasonable. So we'll just try y equals x squared, a really quick graph. And pick any point on the graph. I'll pick this one, tangent line. There's a y axis halfway. So this one I drew. Now the problem is it's not to scale. So if I really wanted this to be accurate, I would need to get the actual slope accurate. Because you can see being off by a small amount is going to move where that midpoint is. Um, so it looks like it's possible, certainly possible. I'd have to get a lot more precise to decide if it was very likely or not likely. And then proving it, I'd have to use calculus anyways. So what we're going to do instead is draw out another picture. I guess we'll use blue. I'll draw in with black. I did. Wait. I don't know what's going on. I'll draw right in blue. Apparently. All right. So there's a point on the y-axis. Oh, I can't 
draw this line. Good enough. So this point up here it has coordinates x, y. What coordinates are on the y-axis right here? All right, what's the x-coordinate on the y-axis? Good, so we established that. I need that property above, so this x-intercept needs to be the midpoint of the line. What does it mean for, and we have, we could write y, x, negative y. I need to go down the same amount I went up. So that needs to be negative y. What is the coordinate, or the uh, xy values of the x-intercept, the other point we know about? I'll do the y-coordinate, 0. So this one's going to be x over 2 is our x-coordinate. Where p is point on the curve. Let's write a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. So if we keep this line going, it has the equation y equals mx plus b. So right away, what is b? Negative y, right there. That's our y-intercept. All right, so I can write that down. b equals negative y. What about our slope of our line? This line is supposed to be a tangent line to something I haven't drawn. So it's supposed to be a tangent line. So it also needs to be the derivative of our curve, basically. Slope of which is also needs to equal slope of our function. That's what it means to be a tangent line. So if I drew some curve just for artistic purposes, it would need to, there's lots of curves, but there's one example of a curve that would have the right the slope that I drew up here. Uh, another example of a curve uh, could have a circle. Might seem a little strange, but right at that point, at least, we're tangent. Not, not saying that these curves are solutions, but at that exact point, it has the right property. So I need my slope of my line to equal the slope of our function, right there. And of course, what do we call slope of our function? dy dx or y prime, depending on what, uh, yeah, what notation we want to use at the moment. So we're piecing together some of these properties. So let's make these substitutions into our line. So we'll call our linear equation asterisk like we do before. So I'm going to sub plug this information back into our original. So we start y equals mx plus b. This is y equals y prime x. b is minus y. So that may seem a little strange, but we're just going to make subs right into that um, linear equation that we had before. So I just took out m, which is y prime, and then b, which is negative y. All right, might as well add up the y's, put them together, keep things a little as simple as possible. 2y equals, so this is starting to look more like what we're familiar with. So we got a derivative, an equation, so we have a differential equation. First order, and can we solve it? Uh, yes, separable. Hopefully, so let's go, uh, we'll write y prime dy dx in this case. Maybe that will help out. So go ahead and solve this. Hopefully I picked one that's super easy.
What did I forget? Plus C. So I did take care of the two. It's a little weird because I rewrote it as an exponent. Uh, but I totally skipped plus C. So this would be one curve, but I need that plus C in the right spot to have all the curves. So doesn't matter where you write it. I'm going to, well, it matters on what step you write it, but not where you write it. So I'll write it next to that Y. Actually, I'm trying to solve for Y, so why don't we add C to the other side? We'll do C plus. Oh no, we're going to get a little tricky here. Why? So I can take ln inverse, so I get e to the c x squared. So e to the c times e to the ln x squared. So as long as we let a be positive and negative, we'll take care of the positive negatives right here. Yeah. I do have one question though. Uh, can you just go up for a second? Sure. Um, is it when, I don't know if I just did it wrong, but on mine I got uh, y equals the e, uh, y prime x minus y, correct? Um, yeah, so it's 2y, so would it be ln of 2y? x ln of y? I don't know if this is I'm supposed to be divided over to get it with the dy. Mm -hmm. So dy is in the numerator. You're gonna yeah, I basically brought my x's to the other side, so they appeared on the side with the 2. Okay. The problem was x and y were in the wrong spot, so we had to kind of divide by each of them. Okay. So I could have brought the 2 to the other side as a half. as It would have worked just, out, just as well. Okay. Okay. I just made it a choice. All right, if we let a be positive and negative, I don't need the plus minus anymore right here. So I'm going to erase the plus minus and just say a can be any positive or negative value. What type of curves have this graph? Very easy answer. You knew it in high school. Parabolas. Happy or sad parabolas. And they all go through what point? They all go through the origin. So all these parabolas are basically, uh, we think of transformations, they are vertically stretched by A. So just think of your standard parabola, when A is a big number, they're going to get taller and narrower. When A is getting closer to zero, they're going to get really wide. A equals zero. What type of parabola is that? It's not really a parabola. Not quite a point. Well, let's go ahead and graph. It would be a line. So technically, you wouldn't call it a parabola. It would be the x-axis, yeah. So let's draw a few. We'll do uh, a equals 1, 2, and 1 half. I think that'll be good enough. So let me move this. I'm trying to align this to the grid that's already there. Aren't you basically dragging, uh, dragging it over like a uh, shape tool? So it be next to impossible to actually line it up. Oh, here we go. Maybe they'll let me. Perfect. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> no. Don't need to be this accurate. All right, 
So when A is a 1, we got 1, 1, negative 1, 1, something like this. Let's not do A is 2, let's do A is 4. Get a really steep one up here. And A is 1 half. So let's go way to, let's go over to a quarter and I'm gonna do something weird. I could have the 1, 1 quarter negative one, one quarter, or if I go over two, up one, over two, up one. Right there, one fourth. Oh, it's like a flower, springtime. All right, so any questions on those A's up there? Let's see if it actually has that property that we were hoping it had in the first place. So I should be able to pick any point on any of these three curves. So pick any point. Let's not just pick a nice one. I'll pick some, well, assume that they're all drawn perfectly. We'll go with that guy right there. I'm gonna do my best to draw the tangent from there through the, let's see, the segment through to the y-axis. It looks like it's pretty reasonable. If I was a little more accurate, it probably would be exactly in between. Uh, what about maybe the steep one? Let's go with this point right here. This is going to require way more accuracy than my graph has. So it's going to look something like that right there and have the midpoint at the x-axis. Uh, so it should seem reasonable that these curves should have the right property. Uh, there's another curve, a equals zero. And it's a little bit silly, but I will draw that one out. Now it's a little strange. What do, take any point on this curve. What's the tangent line look like? It's the line itself. So here's the y-intercept. Is it true that the midpoint is an x-intercept? It's not the only point on the x-axis, but certainly the midpoint is. is one Nobody would debate the midpoint. y equals zero as your answer to your differential equation. It's less than satisfying answer. It can be less than satisfying, yes. But I think we all agree, take any point on this curve and, and then the y, uh, where that intersects the y-axis, and the midpoint of that's on the x-axis. All right. I'm not going to redraw the negative curves. I'll just do one. When a is negative one, you get a very similar situation like that. And of course, you'd have similar properties, but you're, you'd be graphing your tangent segments kind of going upwards right there. So that would be a equals negative 1. Unfortunately, there is not an easy, some easy, straightforward way I can say, oh, you get this problem, and you just do this set of four steps, and you get to the answer. So these are, they give you some geometrical setup and you basically have to very carefully go through and figure out how in the world do I turn that to a differential equation. So I'm going to do one problem from this section and we'll do one problem from the next section and then a dilution problem. Oh, we'll do two problems from 15. All right. You've done some trajectory problems already in calculus class. You've probably done them in engineering class if you've taken enough engineering classes. Uh, if you haven't taken engineering, no problem. We did this before, some of these before, where we did, what do they call that? Just like parabolic trajectories where you have some initial angle yeah. or initial x, y velocity and see where something lands. So we're going to have a definition a curve which intersects a family of one parameter curves. If 
independently of one parameter. Curves at the same angle. is called an isognal trajectory. So we're going to take the same family of curves we just drew from the last problem. So we're going to take that, all those parabolas that were stretched. two isognal trajectories of this family. So I'm going to see if I can copy and paste our graph from the other page and save a little time. And you should try to redraw it as I copy and paste it. And I'm going to, I don't really care about those blue line segments anymore. So we're going to start with this family, and I'm going to uh, try to write what property that this family needs to have. There's no way I can get the origin out of there. So I'm going to take the blue marker and so here's our family, or at least some of the points of our family. So I want to find the pi over 2, or the orthogonal isogonal trajectories of this family. So every point of every curve, I need another curve that is perpendicular to those points. So let's pick some easy points. There's our original one, one. Oh, this one's not lined up on the axes. Now oh, whatever. Good enough. All right, right there. I think the perpendicular looks something like that. So the idea, how do you measure now just a really quick word on how do you measure an angle between two curves that are not straight. So those two curves are not straight. The way you measure the angle is you make tangents. So there's the point. You get two tangents and some other tangent. And then the angle is actually measured on the tangents, not on the curves themselves. Does that make sense? because you need to measure angles off of rays or line segments. So we just use tangents, and you're going to use uh, the angle between the tangents. So 
So the good news is you can basically just approximate it by looking with your eyes. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to try to draw tangents on every point and, and then go perpendicular. All right, so if I keep going, I'm going to end up somewhere over here, and I need to be perpendicular. Here, I need to be perpendicular. So I'm just trying to figure out where this curve will go. And then what would happen down here? So the curve's going to look something like that right there. And let's see. We have A is a really huge number, like 10 million. It almost looks like a vertical line. So there's going to be curves that look almost like the y-axis itself when A is a huge number. So it's going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. And so from here, you can see that it's going to form some type of oval shape right here. And the same thing happens. A mirror image happens down here. So we're going to get this oval shape happening. So what do we call an oval in math? Ellipse. All right. So theoretically, just taking a guess, it's likely going to be some type of ellipse, maybe a circle if we're very lucky. How in the world do we write this out with differential equations? Very carefully. Glad you asked. All right. So how do we? If we knew two slopes, how do you know they're perpendicular? So let's take some easy stuff we know. Two slopes, we'll call it, we'll go m1, m2. Yeah, that works. Are perpendicular when what? So our slopes are just numbers. We're using a slope in the. Um, rise over run sense, not in the uh, x, y vector uh, type. So they're negative reciprocals. So m1 is negative 1 over m2. You could write it as m2 equals, there's equivalent ways to write it. It's the same thing as negative 1 over m1 equals m2. And there's a third way to write it, which is m1, m2 equals negative 1. So whichever of the three ways you want to go, they all tell you the same information. It just depends on what's more convenient for us. So this is what it means to be perpendicular in your slope. So let's go with uh, m1 as the curve the slope of the curve, and m2 will be the slope of our, uh, whatever that word is, our isogonal curve. So I'll go, we'll go with m1 equals slope of original curve. So curve y equals ax squared. And in blue, M2, of slope of isogonal curve. I don't know very much about this curve, so I can't just say, hey, it's going to equal some ellipse. It looks like it should, but I can't just assume that and write that down at this moment. So I'm just going color coding the two. Can you compute M1? Sure can. How do you compute M1? Yeah, take the derivative. So M1 is just, let's see. We'll go ahead and compute it. M1 ddx of y, which is ax squared 2ax. So if you knew your x-coordinate, you could figure out your first slope, your green slope. Well, you need to know which A that you're using. Uh, and you could also write it as just y prime, depending on what is what will work better. So 
So we have so we have a second curve. So let's give these curves some names. It looks like the first one I drew over here would be better drawn in green because it looks a lot like a uh, parabola anyways. I don't know really anything about the blue curve. So in green, the tangent is y equals m1x plus b. That's our tangent. And our other tangent, we'll label, keep this in blue, y equals m2x plus b, just using the other letters we said the other slope was m2. Oh, why would that be bad to use the same b? Yeah, they're very likely not going to have the same y-intercept. So let's go with b2. How about that? That'll keep everything 2. Now we also have to be careful. The y's don't really mean the same thing. So let's y2. So let's sub out for M2. Is it, hopefully I'm keeping these things straight. Two equals, yeah. Yeah, so I think we have enough written down. We just need to synthesize it correctly. <laughs> I was wondering originally if we could just swap out the m1 with the negative 1 over m2. But I didn't want to turn it off. Yes, yeah, so that's basically what we're going to be doing. So we'll just keep going down here. So we have m2 equals negative 1 over m1, which is negative 1 over 2ax. It's not working. 2ax. Now m2, here's what I needed up here. M2 is the slope of our curve that we actually want. Mm -hmm. So there's the slope of the curve that I actually want. So I want to find that. And of course, what is M2? You could write it as now, when I write y prime, I mean y, this y is the one I'm actually looking for. So it's y2. Oh, yes, call it y2. That's what y2 I called it up there. Right. Yeah. So 
we have dy2 over dx equals negative 1 over 2ax. So this is a y2, not y squared. So if you want, you can let z equal y2 and just turn it all to z's. That might be better. And then we'll just turn it back at the end. A little less writing. So I picked these problems. Well, they're in the book. But the reason I picked these as opposed to other ones is because they kind of work sequentially together. And also, the differential equations are not terribly difficult. So I didn't want to have to spend a lot of time thinking about how to solve these. I wanted easy ones to solve that were not easy to set up. So I want to focus on the setup part. All right, so go ahead and solve this. Solve for z. You should be able to solve. It should basically almost immediately be solved for z right away. This is nice separable. And remember, a is constant, so it doesn't have any. You just bring it outside as a constant multiple. So obviously when a equals 0, you're going to have problems here. This form won't work. It's not an ellipse. function looks something like that. We have a vertical stretch on it and a vertical shift as well. So it's over to the negative. Well, a can be positive or negative and C can be positive or negative too. So it could look like that or it could look like this but also can be vertically stretched and shifted as well. So if I quickly throw up that second one. I think that won't work just looking at that one point right there. Although you need to be careful about what A is and what C is. Wasn't it already not defined at zero? Oh, yeah. That so something is not making sense here. So I'm going to go back through this and figure out what we did wrong. No, I don't think that this is, a, is the right solution. Mm -hmm. So we'll come back to this. <coughs> no, I don't think you can take credit for this. Mm -hmm. yes. you, oh, well, if he says yes. 